One of the castle's creepy little jesters approached Shrek. Prince Charming has stopped laughing at our tricks. If we don't get some fresh material soon, we're all going to be out of work. I know how you can help. If you ignite one of your stinky gas clouds right at our feet, that will send us flying into the air. If that doesn't get a laugh, I don't know what will. Bring each of the jesters into the throne room, then it's showtime! Welcome back to Shrek's box. This time we are in Prince Charming's castle, and it doesn't make any sense. Don't worry about it. This did come before Shrek 2, but even if it didn't, I would have some questions, so don't think about it. Anyway, we just need to put these jesters near the flames and then fart on the flames. They'll explode, and then our problems will be solved. I have some questions about the narrative outside of the whole Prince Charming deal, though. The jesters, this was their idea, right? So why did they try to escape from us when we tried to grab them? You know, I kind of figured they would be cooperative and let us grab them. I mean, we have plenty of things getting in our way already. The knights will attack us, the rats will attack us, the warden down here will attack us. Do we really need the jesters trying to escape too? Because I don't think we do. But yeah, that's one of the things this level is notable for, is exactly how much stuff is trying to kill you in such a confined space. This level is mostly hallways. So having so many aggressive NPCs can get a little frustrating. Even the chickens chase you around and try to hurt you. Thankfully, Shrek moves at sonic speed, so this is no problem. As for this mission in particular, there are two factors of challenge. We have to find where the jesters are located and then actually explode them. Exploding them can be a little difficult because not only do they have to be near the fire, but they have to be unconscious. And, uh, if they're not unconscious, they run away from you, so you have to beat them again and place them next to the fire again. All while the knights are trying to beat the tar out of you. You figure Prince Charming or the Jesters could point out that, uh, that Shrek's helping. But everybody in this castle wants you dead. And don't think you can just punch the knights in order to stop them from attacking you. You can only knock them unconscious very briefly, like for 5 to 10 seconds, then they'll get right back up and start wailing on you again. It's much better to evade them unless you need to grab them. It's a little frustrating that the enemies don't stay down. I'm looking around here for the last jester because I forgot that the jester spawned in the balcony. The balcony is an area that you might not even notice if you weren't paying close attention to your surroundings and see a balcony next to Prince Charming's throne. The balcony is where one of the prisoners, one of the, uh, one of the jesters, and one of the rats is located, and that will be important later. After I do make my way to the balcony, the jester has already fallen down. And I mean, that works out for me because it makes him a lot easier to grab. So as I was saying, in the process of designing this game, maybe it would have been a better idea to make the knights, uh, to make the knights stay down. Because there are already so many things in this level you need to grab and worry about. There are hearts that respawn near the start of the level if you're really having that much trouble surviving, but that's just a lot of unnecessary legwork, and then you have to go back and get whoever you dropped, too. It's just, uh, this would be really more convenient if the knight stayed dead. There's a, there's a real party going on near the prince's throne right here. The princess was very cross. She shook her finger as she told Shrek about the prince. That lazy sod sits on his throne and does nothing but watch jesters all day. I've had enough. Shrek, please help me. Get his royal butt up into my room so I can have a word or two with him. So we need to run up to Prince Charming, knock him out, and then carry him all the way to the top of the castle. I've seen people have trouble with this one, and it seems to be because they're using the kick when they want to throw him instead of the shove. The shove works way better for the purposes of this mission because we want to get him forward, not upward, you know? We want to cover as much distance as possible in as little time as possible because the prince recovers from his knocked out state very quickly. In fact, he's recovered twice already and we just started the mission. It's a little, it's a little bit frustrating, but it's a lot easier if you use the shove. It doesn't help that sometimes the prince will get stuck on pieces of the environment. We have to waste a lot of precious time getting him free while the knights are wailing on our ass. Thankfully, the mission is really short, should only take around a minute or two to complete. And we can actually punch the prince up the steps instead of carry him, which makes it a lot easier. Unless he gets stuck again. Oh my god, must 
stuff in the world is perfect. The princess was looking a little squeamish as she told Shrek about her problem. Giant weed rats have infested the castle. We've tried to toss them out, but they keep coming back. Please get rid of them once and for all. No problem, Shrek replied. I've cooked many a weed rat in my day. I'll cook up these critters too. Now, in the original Shrek, eating weed rats is definitely something Shrek did. So in this game, we're going to throw the, re uh, the weed rats into the torches, which will catch them on fire, and then they'll, uh... They'll stay knocked out. Not dead, just knocked out, because they still have stars over their heads. And that's a little weird. Were they too afraid to show rats dying in this teen-rated Shrek video game? Also, why exactly this game was rated teen eludes me. Is it because of the farts? It can't just be because of the farts, right? I haven't mentioned it yet, but there is actually hidden chili pepper in one of the hallways that you can wall jump to get, and you can belch fire on the rats instead of throwing them into the torches, but that's way less convenient because there are torches everywhere and only the one chili pepper. I'm not entirely sure what the chili pepper is even supposed to be for. I mean, yeah, yeah, like I said, you can catch the rats on fire with it, but surely nobody would actually try to do that because of how inconvenient it is. A lot of the time playing this level is spent trying to find out exactly where the rats, jesters, and prisoners are located. They all spawn in certain places, but the NPCs wander, especially when Shrek gets near them, so there's no guarantee they'll stay where they're supposed to be. This time we'll head into the balcony and grab the rat in here. This is where the jester was last time, before he fell down. The rat tends to stay in here because he's too small to escape. A frail dungeon prisoner crawled to Shrek, begging for help. Please, you must help us. Toss all of the prisoners out of the dungeon window so that we might find freedom. Freedom! So three out of four missions in this location involve taking things to places and then doing things to those things when they get to the places. In this case, the things we're taking are the prisoners, and we're taking them to the windows so we can kick them out into their freedom. Now the best way I find to do this is to kick them while you're running down the ramp to the dungeon. If you try to kick them on the ground floor of the dungeon, you'll have a much harder time of it. Thankfully, unlike the jesters, the prisoners do not fight you when you pick them up, either because they are too frail or because the game decided to make sense this time. I can't tell which. There are only four prisoners, and they're relatively easy to find, but one of them is located on the balcony, which again can be hard to find in the first place, so if you don't know what's there, you might be wandering around for a while. Also, for some reason, the prisoners run away from you even though you're trying to help them, and they're the ones that asked you for help in the first place? It's a little bit frustrating. Just a little bit. Getting hit by any of the enemies will knock the prisoner out of your hand, and the warden in particular will chase you down relentlessly for holding one of the prisoners, as he's programmed to do. But we move we move fast enough to outrun them, assuming we know where we're going. And we do have to use the kick to get them out the window, because the, uh, the shove doesn't get nearly enough height. But that's not much of a surprise. It would be much preferred if we got a better angle on the window, you know? I get that there's a light casting on the floor, so you have a relative idea of where the window is, and that's kind of neat, but considering it's easier to kick them from the ramp than from the bottom floor, something must have went wrong. The last prisoner is supposed to be in the balcony, but as I said, the NPCs have a tendency to wander, so he often gets out of the balcony and falls down toward the princess' throne room, especially while you're chasing him, because for some reason they run away from you. It kind of defeats the purpose of spawning them in specific areas if they can just wander around wherever they feel like it. Anyway, this is the last mission in a really underwhelming location. Not a lot here for me to like. Not a lot. But hey, there's still design here as with all the previous missions, so there's that. 